What's up, everyone? It's Kayla for Kayla the video. Makato! In this video, we're gonna be talking about referential integrity. Okay, so yeah, let's just think about this. If we didn't have referential integrity, what horrible, horrible things are gonna happen with our database? So you go through the database normalization, you break your tables up and all that good stuff, but then the problem is you don't go through the effort to make foreign keys, and you just hope that everyone's going to use your database correctly. Or you say, oh, well, the software is going to use the database correctly. You are setting yourself up for failure or a miserable life or death or both. Wait, that was three things. <laughs> okay, anyways, let's go through an example. So I gave you this example a little bit ago. Let's say you have a users and you have members. Now, one specific user has the ID of one. Now, there's three types of memberships. One is going to be bronze, two silver, and three gold. Well, this user is going to reference one of the memberships. So let's say this user puts a four. The problem is there is no membership with that ID. So this is literally pointing to nothing. With foreign keys, this kind of thing cannot happen. And that's what referential integrity is. All of our references have integrity. When you look at this here, without any kind of references or without this membership table, you can be assured that that four references something. It has integrity. You get rid of a foreign key, now you got problems. And you don't want problems, so make sure you use foreign keys. Foreign keys are gonna be like, no bro, you can't use a four because that doesn't exist over here. So that whole concept is called a referential constraint. A constraint restricts the data to certain values, specifically values that exist over here as the primary keys, if that's the column we're referencing. So if this column references here, well now we're only allowed to use one, two, or three. But that's not all referential constraints do. Referential constraints also dictate what happens when you go and delete data. For example, if this here was a three, what happens if we went and just deleted this row? Do you know what happens? What is DB2 going to say? Honestly, I have no idea what it's going to say, but I do know that it's going to not let you. I think. <laughs> Anyways, the three cannot be deleted because we have a child referencing it. These kinds of rules can be configured when you create referential constraints. So when you make a foreign key, there are some default rules that are applied to your references, but you can configure those. Specifically, there's two kinds of referential constraints. There's on update constraints and on delete constraints. So when you make a foreign key, if you created this column as a foreign key, I have code examples of how to do that on my website, that is going to configure the on update to do something and the on delete to do something. So both of these are packaged inside of a foreign key. So it's not like you have to make a foreign key for the updating and a foreign key for the deleting. You just make one foreign key and then you can do all this stuff inside of that. So this example of deleting this three refers specifically to this delete. What happens when we delete? The same thing happens with an update. What happens if we change this three to a four, which generally primary keys should never change, but that's besides the point. The on update is going to kick in then. What happens to this value over here? You see what I'm saying? For example, it could update it. That would be cascading. There are some specific options that I'm going to talk about, so let's do that now. So once again, the two categories were on update and on delete. There actually is a third one on insert, which I actually described already. I just didn't give it a definition. So when you insert data, it verifies that there is a parent with that value. So if you remember the user ID had to reference a membership ID. So there's on insert, on update, on delete. Now let's talk a little bit more specifically about, let's go with on delete. A lot of these things are gonna to apply to the other ones so you can kind of move these around. But let's start with on delete and it'll make a lot of sense because that one's the most easy to think about. So the first option is restrict slash no action. So these are two separate ones. There is a minor difference that if you wanna know, you can look it up, but it's over my head, so <laughs> I'm just gonna move on. Essentially, these do basically the same thing. If you try to delete a parent when on delete is set to restrict, it's only going to let you delete that parent if there's no child referencing it. So if you have an entity here, and it's not referenced by anything, and then you try to delete that row, it will let you. But if you have another entity down here, this would be the child, and it references this entity, 
Well, now it's not going to let you because it's saying, hey, you can't delete this entity because it's being referenced. So it would say, nope, you can't delete that row. You could delete this row though because it's not being referenced by anything. The other option is Cascade. This is one of the most dangerous things of all time, so be warned. <laughs> if you wanna lose your job, make sure you use Cascade. <laughs> Essentially with Cascade is if you delete this parent, it's going to delete any children that reference it. The problem is you don't always know everything that's being referenced by everything. So you might delete something intending just to make a minor change, and that might cascade through your database, deleting all kinds of important information, you know? <laughs> the last option is set null. And what this will do is it will set this reference to null when we delete the parent. So if we have columns, you know, like let's say it's in the user table, so we have a membership ID, and let's say this value is one and this value is one. Well, over in the membership table, if we deleted the row with this ID in the user table, this would just be replaced with none. In the user table, this would show up as this. Now, this is okay if you allow orphaned children. So this is called an orphan row, this right here. In some situations, it's appropriate to have orphaned rows. Other times, it's not. That's a decision that is going to be up to you or your boss or someone else, you know? <laughs> So make sure you're careful to understand how your tables are going to be used. Does it make sense for a user to not have a membership? Well, maybe they signed up and you know they got rid of their membership and they still have an account, but they just can't use any of the stuff. Well, then it would make sense to allow nulls here and you might set it to set null when you delete. Otherwise, you might set it to restrict if you don't want orphaned rows. Now, if you don't want nulls in this ever, then you're going to want to set this foreign key as not null. And this is basically saying this child has to have a parent for that column. That's a summary for on delete. You can apply it essentially the same way to on update, but now you guys just get an overview of how the referential integrity works and different ways you can configure it. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that gave you a great introduction to referential integrity. The next video is going to be talking about a new type of integrity, so be sure to check that out unless you're super lame, and in that case, you should check it out anyways because you need to learn the material. <laughs> so please be sure to check that out. Subscribe, like the videos, and check the descriptions for some useful links to download DB2 and to check out my website. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.